Hi and welcome back to my Stitch Along series. This is Risa and this video accompanies the kit review that I did of the Ribbon Embroidery Felted Handbag Kit by D. Van de Kirk. Thanks for watching this video. If you haven't already, do support me by clicking on the notification buttons, subscribing to my channel and liking away as you watch my videos. I am absolutely thrilled that I can finally share the stitch along video for this gorgeous project. Now you need a few materials to complete this project. You'll need a pair of cloth scissors, embroidery scissors, cutting mat, a hands-free embroidery stand, preferably with a rectangular frame, a set of stitching pins and a sewing machine. Now that's optional to stitch the inner lining of the bag and some brown sewing thread, but you can also stitch the inner lining. Uh, by hand, which I will talk about. Now I'm going to start on this green felt with the more interesting sort of pattern as the front part of the bag. And this is the back. Now I'm going to use the 278 maxi green thread that's in the kit and I'm going to use two strands to stitch a row of running stitches along the fold to mark the halfway point of the bag. Next I'm going to mount the backing fabric on my hands-free frame. Now you can watch the kit review and installation of this frame on my channel by clicking on the link above. Now ensure that your backing fabric is nice and taut in your hoop or rectangular frame. And then I am going to place this felt over the backing fabric like so and I am going to tack the two fabrics together by running simple running stitches along the felt here. You can see that I have placed the halfway mark of the felt right above the end of the frame here and you'll notice why I've chosen a rectangular frame over a round hoop as this just makes it easier for me to stitch the pattern without having to remove the hoop every now and then as I complete different sections of the embroidery work. Now for the bottom half of the felt, um, all I'm going to do here is roll it inwards into a little scroll kind of thing and stitch running stitches through the scroll to hold the bottom in place so that it doesn't interfere with the ribbon work and embroidery that I will be doing on the top of the felt. The next step is for me to decide where I want the roses to be placed on the felt. So what I'm going to do is just cut out the rose directly from the sampler. I mean, you can just use a piece of white paper as well. But since I'm not going to be making another one of these felt bags, I'm just going to cut the roses out of the rose sample that's included in the kit. And now I'm just going to play around with the positioning of the roses and pin the location in place so I know where to place the stems that would be the next step in the stitching process. I'm going to use this bamboo yarn to stitch the stems for the roses and thread number 802 as the couching thread for the stems. I need to cut out the thread into three pieces. So what I'm going to do first is measure out 10 inches and cut this piece out. And I'm going to use this smaller piece for the short stem on the left here, the longer piece for the longest stem in the center and the remaining thread for the stem on the right. 
I'm going to start with the central stem here and what I'm going to do is fold the thread into half first and then fold it again and then just twirl it or twist it around until I get a nice thick vine for a stem. Now I'm going to use the two strands of 802 couching thread to couch the bottom here. Just straight stitches and then I am going to couch along the stem. So here I have stitched one that was horizontal as you can see and it's quite an obvious stitch. The next stitch I am stitching along the vein of the twist and that way I can camouflage the couching thread. Now you can just end off by stitching a knot onto the backing fabric. Now for the shorter stem on the left I'm going to use a slightly different technique by folding the thread into half and then first twisting it before folding it into half again and this way the two parts twirl against each other and you get a different look for a stem and couching it would be similar to the longer stem along the vein of that twirl and I'll do the same for the third stem now I'm going to use the mohair wool yarn to stitch the stems for the leaves here here I've used two strands and I'm twisting it or twirling it against each other as you can see I have pinned the stems for the other leaves and I'm just going to go ahead and show you how to pin the stem for this particular leaf. As you can see I am twirling it as I pin it into position onto the felt. And so I'm just using the big picture as a reference guide um, of where I should place the stems. Now I'm going to use this sort of silky Raj Mahal purplish thread to couch the stems in place for the leaf. The good thing is that it's mohair wool yarn so it's kind of hairy and so you don't um, see the couching thread all that much as we did with the green stems. I'm going to use the fluffy emerald green yarn here to stitch the rose leaf in the center. I'm just referring to the image of the bag that's in the kit. The instructions in the book don't mention what to do with this particular yarn or with the fluffy wool yellow yarn. I presume this is by design to give us a little bit more freedom of what we would like to do with the yarns that are in the kit. Finally, I'm going to use the gold thread in the kit to whip the green stems with it. So first I'm going to couch it or stitch it in place, like so. And then I'm going to use the back of the needle to essentially just go under the stem without piercing the felt and then over it again, under and over. And that way you get this little shine or twinkle on the rose stems, which looks very nice. Here's an overview of all of the stems that have been stitched in the pattern. So you can see the green stems for the roses, the brownish purplish stems for the blue and yellow leaves, and the hairy stem in the center for the large green leaves that I presume belong to the rose and I've decided to stitch one more branch for that particular stem. I must admit that I'm not particularly keen on this very hairy yarn to create a stem so I'm gonna trim off some of the longer strands here. Maybe it'll look better after we stitch the larger green leaves. It does look very nice in the completed picture of the bag, I must admit. So I'm just going to trust the designer here and see how it all goes when we finish. I'm going to use the yellow wool yarn 
to whip it around the two brown stems at the bottom of the pattern here and I'm going to use the tapestry needle because it has a larger eye that allows me to insert the yarn in without destroying it. I'm also going to use two strands of the blue thread to give texture to the top brown stems. So here again I'm couching the yellow yarn into place and then I'm just going to use the back of the tapestry needle to whip this yarn around the brown stem. So just go under and over and then when I reach the end I'll just couch it or stitch it into place. I'm going to start by using the 13mm green ribbon to stitch the large green leaves here and I'm going to stitch at the top of the stem as the leaves come under the large rows that will be stitched later on. Now I'm going to also use the purple silk thread, one strand of it, to stitch the veins. Now to start the ribbon embroidery, cut a 45 degree angle of the ribbon and don't forget to straighten it with a straightening iron or a, a normal iron that you may have around and use the chenille 16 needle to thread the 13 mm silk ribbon now you can use that 45 degree angle to insert the ribbon into the eye and then arrest it by inserting the needle in the center of that ribbon and then just fold the back insert the needle and you'll have a knot that will be arrested when you start stitching. I'm going to stitch ribbon stitches here to form the leaves and you can see you insert the needle in the center of the ribbon there and make sure as you pull it you don't pull it too tight so that you get a nice loop and a nice tip for the leaf. Now to end off all you need to do is go in through the backing fabric here. Don't pierce the felt and you can just cut off the ends. There'll be a little tail left which I will stitch onto the backing fabric once I have a few more ribbon tails at the back. I noticed that I am running short of the green ribbon here, so I'm going to use even the small pieces. So in this, you can see that I have just pulled out a piece and I'm going to use the corner to insert it into the needle and pull it through carefully. So I wouldn't be able to arrest it, but I'm just going to leave it dangling at the back and I'm going to stitch all of the tails at the end. So I'm going to be more careful about how I use the ribbons to stitch the large leaves and I've decided I'm going to stitch each pair starting with one and ending with the other and then cutting it off at the back and then stitching the next two leaves as well and I have decided that I'm not going to create that little knot but just leave the ends dangling which then I will just stitch to the backing fabric. Now the final step here is to stitch the veins with the purple silk thread starting at the bottom and stitching a straight stitch to the top of the center to create the central spine and then straight stitches to the side. To finish off I'm going to use the purple tubular beads to stitch a defined tip to these leaves and to do that 
I will bring out the thread about three inches from the top of the leaf and then stitch the bead into place close to the top and you'll see that um, a nice little tip is created for the large green leaves. I'm going to go ahead and stitch the 7mm yellow and blue leaves as I've already started with the leaves and they sort of are in the background to the roses so I'm just going to continue until all of the leaves are completed in the design pattern. At this point here I ran out of blue ribbons and I compensated by using ribbons that I had in stock as you can see in this stem. So what I used was 7mm river silk ribbons that I have in my collection and I use alcohol based pro markers in two colors azure and turquoise to give or get the shade um, that I want for the remaining blue ribbons. You may also use just plain cream or white silk ribbons and you'll get the same effect if you use the pro markers. So you can see here that I may have been wasteful in using the blue ribbons. So perhaps the kit had sufficient blue ribbons, um, but uh, later on I sort of would cut the ribbons at the end instead of dragging it across. Now, just a warning to be more careful with the ribbon supply that you have in the kit. This is the original blue ribbon that's left in the kit and I'm going to show you how to dye cream and light blue silk ribbons if you have them in your supply with Pro Markers. I'm going to start with the cream here and I'm using the darker of the two shades. As you can see, these are alcohol-based permanent dyes so they spread really evenly on the silk ribbon and I'm going to use a little bit of the turquoise to give it a greenish shade. Um, it's a little bit darker than the ribbon in the kit so I'm going to start with turquoise here on the blue ribbon and then dab it with some of the darker azure blue to give it sort of a shading. That's done and I'm gonna let them dry for a bit. As you can see, the shading on the cream silk ribbon better matches the one in the kit.
So again, I'm running out of the yellow 7mm ribbon and I still have these sections to stitch the leaves on. So luckily I do have 7mm yellow ribbons again in my stock, which I have used. So here I'm using a combination of the purple beads and the blue beads to stitch the tips of the leaves. And doesn't it just look absolutely gorgeous? I've used the purple beads on one side and the blue beads on the other, just to give it a little bit of balance. I've cut out an 18 inch length of 32 mm 139 yellow ribbon here to create the folded ribbon row centers. Now I'm not going to go through the entire process. You can watch the video carefully and I'm sure you'll be able to replicate it. Now keep a length of yellow 141 single strand thread ready as you'll need to stitch the folds in place as you move along. So here I'm stitching seven folds with a single stab stitch to keep the folds together. The tip in making the folded rows is to ensure that the longer side of the ribbon length is always on your left with each fold that you make. Here I've finished the folded rows and I'm going to cut off the extra tail there and attach it now to the felt. Now you may want to go rows by rows or just create three folded rows ribbon centers for the other roses as well. I find it easier to keep all of the rose parts ready and then essentially just stitch them at the end. Here I'm stitching the largest rows in the pattern. Now I'm going to cut out 146 32 mm ribbon and I'm going to cut out 3 inches or 2 pieces of 3 inches to stitch the small sharp petals for the large rows. Now don't forget to iron them out. Here I had forgotten to iron them out before cutting them. Preferably you should do it um, before you start cutting the ribbons. You'll notice here that I've left the thread on the folded rows because I'll need that thread to stitch it onto the felted fabric. Now you can use the needles in the kit and keep a few like five or six needles already threaded with the yellow 141 thread and keep them ready in a pin cushion so that it'll be easier and faster to move along with the embroidery of the felt bag. So here again, I'm not gonna go through uh, the process, just watch the video carefully to create 
two of these sharp small petals. Now using the flat part of the sharp petals, I am going to stitch the two around the row center. Now ensure that you stitch it not only into the felt but onto the row center as well. Before adding the sharp petals, I actually pulled the thread a little bit to create a few folds in the petal to give it a little bit more realistic look. To stitch the medium sized petals, I am measuring out 5 inches of the 32mm 146 ribbon in the kit and I'm going to cut out two pieces for two petals for the large rows. To attach the medium sized petals, I'm going to do pretty much the same thing as I did with the sharp petals and that is face the flat side towards the rows like so and pull the thread a bit to get a few nice waves on the ribbon and then stitch it or attach it to the felt. Make sure you attach it right under the row center. and maybe a few stitches onto the row center itself so that the ribbon sort of stands up a little bit. Next I've cut out 10 inches of the 139 ribbon to create large petals around the rows. Now I've already attached those uh, petals, um, however I forgot to record it so I'm just going to show you how I did it and you can watch it when I do the second rows on the top of the felt. You just fold like you did for the medium sized petals and then stitch it in place and run some running stitches at the bottom. Now you don't create the fold on the other end and I'll show you why and face the fold on the outside and when you attach it all you need to do here differently is to fold it at 45 degrees angle and then attach it to the felt so that creates really cute petals so I've already attached it in this case and you can watch the second rows to do it now I'm using the 146 13mm silk ribbon 
to create looped stitches. I'm taking the full length here and folding it into half and cutting a 45 degrees angle in order to insert it into the needle. Now do keep one strand of 141 thread ready but I'll be stitching the 13mm ribbon directly onto the felt and creating little loops here but I may need to stitch the loops in place. So here I'm going to insert the needle right close to where I came in and use a pin to hold the loop in place like so. Next I'm going to cut out two pieces of 139 ribbon and I'll cut out about two inches, two and a half inches and create folded petals for the rows here. Finally for the outer petals I've cut out 10 inches of 146 ribbon here and created folds on one end like I did for the large petals and now I'm just sort of folding it into place. Now the instructions um, says to work it in an anti-clockwise direction and to just sort of gather the petals or the ribbon while you stitch it but as you can see I also folded the ribbon here and then. Here I'm tucking the end under the rose petals to camouflage it. For the sepals and leaves I'm cutting out three parts of a 13mm green ribbon and here I'm going to first create a loose French knot at the bottom of the rose and just a straight stitch over it to give it a nice looking sepal and then I'm going to create ribbon stitches or inverted ribbon stitches here to create the leaves. Finally I'm going to attach the green beads that are in the kit to finish off this gorgeous rose. For the second rose and rosebud I've prepared all the petals. So here you can see are uh, the petals for the second rose. This is the folded rose center. Two sharp petals, two folded petals here, and two medium-sized petals, and 13 mm ribbon here for the loop stitches that I will create. And for the bud, essentially, I only need the center of the rose and a medium size petal.
although it's not required, I'm gonna add folded petal here with the 13 mm ribbons and just sort of fill up the gaps in the rosebud here. I wasn't too happy with how it was looking. So I'm gonna stitch two folded petals here, one with 13 mm and the other with 32 mm. So just give it a little bit more body here. Now I'm still not happy with how the bud is looking, so I'm going to add another folded petal here with the 32mm with ribbon. Look, if your um, rosebuds come out really well with just the center folded uh, ribbon and the medium size, please go ahead with that. Now I'm going to move on to stitching the sepals and the leaves for the two ribbons. As you can see here is an inverted ribbon stitch and the first was a ribbon stitch and I'm going to add the beads when I finish. I haven't added shading but there is some felt in the kit that you can use to add shading to the stems and under the roses so you can use either the blue felt and just tuck it in or the green felt and the corresponding floss to sort of couch it in place. So blue for the blue and green thread for the green. Congratulations for getting this far. Now we're in the final stage of stitching the bag and doesn't the embroidery just look gorgeous? You can just hang it up this way if you want, but I'm gonna go ahead with stitching the bag and what I'm doing here is just trimming the backing fabric and I'm gonna trim it close to the embroidery, just making sure that I don't snip any of the stitches by accident. Now I'm going to place the embroidered felt over the second felt and take two strands of blue thread to stitch fly stitches along the border. Now I'm going to take the brown fabric for the inner lining and use the suede side as the right side and I'm going to cut it out to the size of the green felt. And then this piece I will use as the pockets for the inner lining as per the instructions. So I'm going to just divide it into two. First off I'm going to tack the embroidered felt onto the backing felt like so and here I have completed the fly stitches on three corners and I'm just going to show you how to go about it. So when you get to the corner you essentially take in the thread like so to the left or to the bottom if you are facing the embroidery piece to the bottom and then bring the needle up in the center a few millimeters to the bottom insert it now to the right or to the top again bring in the needle a few millimeters down to the bottom and there you get a little V and now again repeat the whole process insert the needle to the bottom or to the left depending on how you're stitching and bring up the needle to the bottom so you go on in this manner until you finish the fly stitches and finish the border of the bag Next up is sewing the inner lining for the bag and I'm going to use a sewing machine to move things along here and I'm going to cut two pieces for the pockets. Now you can stitch the pockets onto the inner lining using back stitch by hand. You don't necessarily need a sewing machine but if you do have a sewing machine I'm going to use a dark brown thread here as you can see and I am going to stitch a hem on the top parts of the pocket so just the top not all around before I attach it to the main lining.
Next, I'm going to stitch the pockets onto the main lining. You can see that I have attached them with pins here and folded the edges. So the hem is just for the top, by the way, not for all around the pocket piece. Now that that's done, I am going to stitch a single stitch on the center of the pocket. So I have two parts in the pocket. Now the final part is to face the two right sides together, so the two suede sides, and stitch the lining all around, leaving the top open. Here I have the lining ready and I have folded the top as you can see. This is the inner part of the lining and now I'm going to stitch a hem here on the top. To sew the outer part of the felted bag by hand, I am going to use hidden stitches at this point here and I brought up the thread from the inside of the felt bag and now I'm stitching the hidden stitches on the outside so you can see that I'm just taking a little bit of felt and then stitching the two parts together you don't need to stitch the outer felt parts otherwise you're going to see it now I've done that on the other side already now what I'm going to do is turn the felted bag inside out. So here we have it. I'm going to turn it, attach the two parts and measure out two inches or two and a half inches, essentially two inches out from the embroidered felt and stitch back stitches here. So this can easily be done by hand. You don't need a sewing machine for that. And to get the right line, as you can see, I just pull the thread off and on. So here it is. I've stitched both sides with back stitches and you can see the inside of the back or rather the outside of the bag. And now I'm going to attach the leather straps that are in the kit. I'm going to cut out 75 centimeters of the leather strap. Now you can cut off any length depending on the length of the bag that you want. I'm going to use the needles for stitching leather here and take two strands of green thread measuring out about two and a half, two inches and then from the corners making sure that they're equidistant. And I'm going to use that flap or that fold so that I am not stitching through the felt and you don't see the stitches in the front and I'm going to stitch just simple back stitches again here. Now it is very tough to stitch those leather straps I must say so be careful the needles are super sharp so really really be careful when you're stitching it and of course I didn't show you how I stitch the fold on the top of the bag essentially all you need to do is fold it and use back stitches to stitch that fold and make sure the front of the back stitches is on the front of the bag so you see a nice line for the top of the bag. Now I'm going to stitch the button and again really simple just stitch it on to the flap here.
finally I'm going to insert the inner lining here and use hidden stitches to stitch the inner lining. First I am just tacking it onto the bag and then I'll start hand stitching the inner lining and that would be basically the last step in stitching this gorgeous bag. And here is the completed bag. Isn't it just gorgeous? I love it and I can't wait to carry it around and have my friends envy the bag that I'm carrying. I must add that I really enjoyed this kit by Devan Kirk and I hope you did too and thank you for watching. Don't forget to click on the subscribe, like and notification buttons to see more of my videos in the future. Thank you very much and see you again. Bye bye.